Mr. Maserati, Maserati, do you uh, wish to be heard in regard to your motion? Yes, Judge. Um, just, just briefly, uh, Mr. Um, Goldie, uh, do, you, do you care about the procedural history at all? Or? Um, I do to the extent that was this video shown to the person who granted probable cause? I doesn't seem that it was in a book with regards to what was written by Mr. Craddock. Um, so you have the, the, the statement that Mr. Craddock wrote. I'm trying to find it right now. So if I may? Sure. So I'd like to show this to the state. Sure. That it, it, can I just see it so I can know what I'm looking for in the file? OK. So. Mr. Cradwell went to the police station on December 20th, 2017, several weeks before the complaint was issued, and uh, filed a police report with, with the officers in New Brunswick. I don't know if you have that report. I do have a report in the court file. And on that date is the, when Mr. December 20th, is that what yes. you're talking and about? And on that date is when Mr. Cradwell turned over uh, a, 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 a USB drive uh, to the police officer uh, who advised him that he can, he can uh, sign his own complaint. Apparently the police presumably didn't believe there was enough to, to sign a complaint themselves. That's when he, according, in accordance with the, with, with the records, that's when it appears that the thumb drive containing the video was turned over several weeks before um, the complaint was was uh, signed. I don't know from the records whether on the day that the complaint was signed, the video was shown to the court administrator. I don't know the answer to that. I'm looking at the complaint right now. It doesn't say. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know. So I, from the records, it doesn't look like so you're right. Two, two things. One, as far as the filing of the police report, and, and I assume Mr. Mazzarani is just doing his job, but I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily appropriate to just assume that the police um, didn't think there was enough to sign a complaint. We don't know what the reason why they didn't sign. I don't think it's appropriate to just assume that. Second, um, I've been speaking with Mr. Craddaville. Um, he has indicated that he did, in fact, provide um, the video, and it sounds like they watched it together um, before with the court administrator before. Uh, Which court administrator? Uh, her name is Marlena Pato. I believe she's the. Okay. Judge, I, I was only drawing an inference from the language of the police report. Uh -huh. And also, uh, unless Mr. Craddaville is going to be sworn in that he showed the video to the court administrator, I don't know if the court can accept his representation without him taking the oath. I'm just going by what the records show. Okay. I'll hear you and if the prosecutor wishes to do so. She can do yeah, so. I, I understand that. And, and I, it doesn't look like Mr. Cradwell has any, any problem with um, being placed under oath okay. and indicating that. I thought we were just discussing the procedural history. Unfortunately, the only sure. person in this room that knows whether the video was, was shown or not um, is Mr. Cradwell, because none of us none of us right. are there. So he's, he's the only one that would be able to answer that question. Um, I thought we were just discussing the procedural history, but um, if Mr. Cradwell wants to tell the court in his own words and, and be placed under oath, um, I don't have any Okay. Any other questions regarding the procedural history? No. So, Judge, um, so basically what you saw is the sum and substance of what Mr. Cradiville is complaining about. 
with regards to the harassment statute, uh, the, the biggest hurdle to, um, uh, to, I guess, alleged victims of harassment is, was there an intent or purpose to harass in the actions? And courts have regularly and consistently drawn a distinction between a purpose to harass and somebody just basically being annoyed and, and shooting their mouth off. Uh, the harassment statute, when we're talking about the purpose to harass and what's charged here, Judge, uh, it, it is the courts are very careful to dichotomize criminal behavior from what is considered free speech. And, and that's really, that's been the struggle of, of the uh, of the appellate, uh, the trial courts and the appellate courts. So some cases that I'd like to bring to the court's attention, uh, there are facts specific that the court found, the appellate court reversed convictions on with regards to the language and the conduct are, first, uh, in State versus Duncan, this is an appellate division case, 376 NJ Super 253, it's from 2005. Uh, the defendant in that case was on the way to the hospital um, and uh, he, he had an emergency. He was delayed by a, a police roadblock. He called 911 and he said, amongst other things, I got to wait in fucking line because you have a fucking roadblock. You pricks don't have anything better to do. What is this a fucking Nazi state? After that, the police traced the call and called the man who then, first he denied being at the roadblock, he said he was at the mall, then he called them fucking Nazis. So they knew it was him. So they charged him with um, misuse of the 911 emergency system, which is causing uh, you know, false public alarm. It was downgraded to harassment. He was tried in the law division on, uh, you know, on the harassment, and he was convicted by the trial court. But on, on appeal, the court held, they reversed the conviction, and they held that, you know, it was clear that the, the defendant was angry. Uh, it, it was clear that, he, you know, he shouldn't have used that type of language. But all he was was angry. And, and he, his anger and his, the things that he said did not transgress into uh, criminal behavior, which is what the harassment statute requires for, you know, purpose to harass. Um, in a, in a family division case, which is domestic violence in this particular case, it's per Perano versus Perano, 280 NJ Super 47. This is an appellate division case from 1995. Um, in that case, the, the defendant was an estranged husband. He, was, uh, he got into an argument with his wife um, because he believed that she was selling uh, marital assets without you know, his permission, presumably. Um, and uh, he said some, some <coughs> things, like uh, one of the things he said to his wife was, uh, I'll bury you. Um, and the appellate divi uh, the, the, he was convicted in the Chancery Division, in, in the family part, and the appellate division reversed, finding that although his comments were objectively alarming, when you say to somebody, I'll bury you, presumably you're threatening to kill them, um, the appellate court disagreed that he had the purpose to harass and basically went back to he's making these comments because he was angry and he was annoyed. It just didn't, it wasn't, it didn't rise to the level of harassment, criminal harassment. In JNS versus DBS, 302 NJ Super 525, this is an appellate division case from 1997. Um, also, uh, a harassment prosecution. Uh, in that case, the defendant called his wife uh, obscene names, saying uh, offensive things that are ethnic and sexual in nature. Uh, uh, during a phone conversation, he says to her, you're going down, you're going down, I'm going to destroy you. Um, again, the appellate division said that these were two people that were arguing and there, were, there was mutual annoyance between them, but there was no purpose to harass. That's kind of the back, the, the, the legal backdrop. Uh, those are some examples, Judge. Um, what happens in this video that you see, and I, I wanted you to see the whole video because um, 
what happens is we see Mr. Craddleville, uh, I guess at, at, a, at a Board of Commissioners hearing, uh, New Brunswick Housing Authority, and Mr. Craddleville is, is a, a regular at these meetings. He appears to be known by the, that's the chairperson, I believe, or somebody who's on the board. Who's the first person speaking, do you know? It's, it's, it's the chairperson, Dale Caldwell. Caldwell? I believe that's the chairperson of the Board of Commissioners, Judge. Mr. Woley is on the board. It's a voluntary uh, uh, assignment, basically. He doesn't get paid for it. Um, that's at least my understanding. I, you know, I don't want to be misquoted, but that's my understanding. So uh, it appears from, from, from the chairperson that Mr. Craddleville is a known quantity at, at this meeting because he addresses him uh, by, by name. And uh, it appears that uh, Mr. Craddleville uh, is videoing this, this interaction and he's making accusatory comments about spending, about how the board is doing things. Obviously those are not, uh, you know, a, a nice afternoon uh, cup of tea conversation with your friends. They're somewhat confrontational, so I'm sure the annoyance level is high. I'm sure uh, the, the, the board members are uh, annoyed by Mr. Craddleville and Mr. Craddleville may be annoyed by them, but that is kind of an assumption of risk that Mr. Crowdwell, I would argue, took in, in, in addressing the board members in that way. And if you look at the camera angle, Judge, uh, throughout the entire video, most of the entire video, the camera angle is, is kind of looking up. Uh, most of the time it's looking up at the chairperson and other times it's looking up at other people. So it makes the person and their hands gestures seem more menacing than if the camera angle was at eye level, if you will. And it would be obviously less menacing if the camera angle was higher than a person. I mean, that's just photography and common sense. So Mr. Craddleville holds his, presumably his phone, low, and it appears that the person gesturing with their hands is, is more menacing than a person would be, like I am right now, you're looking at me eye level, I'm talking with my hands and I'm, I'm gesturing and, and, and it, it, it just looks more menacing. So you have that perspective from the, the, the camera. I don't know if that's intentional or not, it, it's irrelevant for you. And then, you know, Mr. Crowdable is, is levying these accusations that I think the, 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 there's annoyance, there's anger by both parties. Uh, and then, obviously, you have the chairperson, you have the attorney for the Board. You have Mr. Waldy there, who's, according to um, to Mr. Craddle, who calls Mr. Waldy by name. They, they know each other from these meetings. So the the the, the, the mood is, is obviously not friendly, and and Mr. Craddle is loving these accusations of, of I guess illegal conduct on, on behalf of the board members, asking questions about spending, and and all you see. All, all you see, that, I'm talking just about the conduct of Mr. Wall, he is annoyance. He's, he's upset, rightly so, I would argue, with Mr. Craddleville's questions, and he tells Mr. Craddleville that he's stupid. I mean, it's, it's, his, it's, it's his choice of words, maybe not the smartest choice of words, but it doesn't transgress into criminal choice of words. He, told, he tells him, uh, you know, the meeting is over, I'm not answering your questions, stop asking questions. And Mr. Craddleville makes a big deal about how Mr. Woldy was going to punch him. And if you look at the video carefully, Mr. Mr. Woldy's hand, his right hand, which is, I guess, the, the complaint of conduct, is open. And he's speaking to Mr. Craddleville with open hands. He, he then closes his, his fist, and he has his finger uh, uh, protruding up. He didn't make a fist as if to punch somebody where you curl your entire fist, all your fingers, and you put your thumb on the inside looking to punch somebody level, but he has his hand up and he, he closes his fist with his, with his finger up for not even a second, if you look at that video. And he opens his hand back up and he walks away. And Mr. Craddle, instead of Mr. Craddle claims that he was threatened, claims that he's in fear for his life, that Mr. Woldy has a purpose to harass him, instead of just backing off, he chases him in the street. Which, which in and of itself should, should tell you that the conduct that Mr. Craddle is complaining of does not rise to the level of, of harassment. But um, I, I, would, I, would, I would say that Mr. Craddle was somewhat inviting this type of confrontation by the board members and by, by Mr. Wolke. 
So st statutorily, I don't think there are enough facts to support that very crucial element, which is the element of purpose to harass, Judge. Uh, so that's, and I think the, 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 the complaint should be dismissed based uh, on that. Thank you. Thank you. Prosecutor? The only thing I think I would like to add, it, it would appear that the reason that Mr. Cradible signed this complaint wasn't just the, the motion of the fist. Um, I believe it was the comment made after the fact. Um, it sounded like he said, the meeting is over, I'll knock you out, um, which is what Mr. Cradible interpreted as a threat um, to subject him to um, offensive touching or striking. So it was um, a combination of the hand gesture and the um, remark, I'll knock you out, um, that caused uh, Mr. Cradville to feel that that violated the harassment statute. Other than that, Judge, I will submit to your honor's discretion. You had an opportunity to watch the video. Um, sometimes videos, you know, speak for themselves. That, that watching, you can, you can see for yourself what happened. Um, and it's really whether the court feels that what happened uh, rises to the level of harassment on the statute. Just briefly, Judge, I forgot to mention about the I'm not you out. Counsel's absolutely correct. My client did say that he was outside the door being followed by Mr. Crowderville when he uttered those words. If, if you, I don't know if you recall seeing when he said that door was open, there was a person between them, and my client said, the meeting is over, I'll knock you out, as Mr. Crowderville is following him outside. I forgot to mention, I apologize, counsel's correct. Thank you. The statute in question is 2C33-4B, which reads, under 2C33-4, harassment, um, except as provided in subsection E, which is not relevant to this section, a person commits a petty disorderly person's offense if with the purpose to harass another, he, subsection B indicates, subjects another to striking, kicking, shoving, or other offensive touching, or threatens to do so. The complaint as it states on its face indicates that um, Mr. Waldy threatened to subject another, to, another person to striking, specifically by getting into Charlie Crowd Charles Cardinal's face and making his right hand into a fist in an aggressive manner towards the complainant and then stating to the complainant, I'll knock you out in a manner likely to cause annoyance or alarm. I've had the opportunity to uh, watch the video, read the affidavit of probable cause, um, and uh, also um, I am familiar with many of the cases counsel uh, brought up as well as the multitude of cases cited in the um, 2C annotated version, uh, talking about uh, what constitutes harassment, what constitutes the purpose to harass another, um, and having been a working in the criminal er area of law for the last 26 years, um, having to had uh, both screen, charge, defend, and preside over numerous harassment cases. I've had the opportunity to review the video in this particular matter. The video, while containing essentially the facts as indicated on the complaint, uh, the video does not indicate the facts to be as portrayed in the complaint. The complaint states as if the defendant walked up to the victim with a fist and said to him, he'll knock him out. That's not what's portrayed in the video. The video clearly indicates a, an ongoing course of conduct between numerous people. Uh, one person who is uh, the chairman, um, Mr. Caldwell, who basically is on the video the majority of the time, having a conversation back and forth with Mr. Crowdable. Um, Mr. Crowdable clearly has uh, Mr. Caldwell on video. Um, Mr. Caldwell um, is trying to answer Mr. Crowdable's questions. Um, 
Mr. Crowderville is being quite belligerent and confrontational with Mr. Caldwell. Mr. Caldwell is trying to answer his questions. Mr. Crowderville comes up with a different question um, and is not satisfied with the answers he's getting. Um, another individual comes into, picture, uh, into the video whom I'm assuming is the attorney, uh, some attorney. Um, again, he tries to diffuse the situation. Mr. Crowderville becomes confrontational with that person. Um, at the very end of the video, which I think constitutes the last 30 to 45 seconds, Mr. Waldy appears on video. Mr. Waldy is walking out. He tells Mr. Crowderville the meeting is over. Um, he's using his hand gestures similar to Mr. Mazzarani was during his um, argument to the court, um, talking with his hands, but not in an aggressive or threatening manner. Um, basically tells Mr. Crowderville that he's, the meeting is over. Um, I would not characterize Mr. Waldy's hand as being in the shape of a fist. Um, he had his hands open. He was gesturing with his hands. He then made another gesture as if to point, make a point with his hand. So some of his fingers were curled. His other fingers were open. But in no, at no time on this video um, does Mr. Waldy make a gesture as if he's making a fist towards Mr. Crowder. Um, he's simply speaking. He then turns to walk out the door. Mr. Cradwell says something else, and I barely heard. And but for defense counsel's um, indicating that his client did say, I'll knock you out, I barely heard that on the video. It certainly wasn't in Mr. Cradwell's face. He said it as he was, if he said it, it was as if he was walking out and continued to walk away from Mr. Cradwell, who continued to follow Mr. Waldy out the door. I think the whole course of events is shameful. I think that this video was designed to um, instigate um, and cause an altercation. I do not find that Mr. Waldy or any of the other people in the video acted improperly. Mr. Crowderville wanted an argument. He may have somewhat gotten an argument from some people. Um, but that certainly, based upon the way the harassment statute is written, based upon the constitutionality of this statute and the case law, the repeated number of cases indicating that varying forms of language are not um, harassment. There has to be a purpose to harass. There's no way from this video that anybody could reasonably find that Mr. Waldy, in telling Mr. Crowderville that the, that the meeting was over, had a purpose to harass Mr. Crowderville. It simply does not exist. It simply is not portrayed on the video. And while the affidavit of probable cause summarizes the video to some extent, the affidavit of probable cause says, I repeated the question, and Mr. Waldy approached me getting in my face and making his right hand into a fist. Um, that's not what was appeared on the video. Um, Mr. Crowderville shouted, this guy is about to punch me to instigate further action, but that is not what appears on the video from the other individuals who are present. And based upon the video, based upon the statute, based upon all of the evidence before the court, I have serious concerns about the finding of probable cause in the first place on this um, matter. Um, and I will grant the defendant's motion to dismiss um, based upon the facts that the facts before the court simply could never support a conviction for this charge.